at the Urban Age. It is my first time, and uh, I thank all the sponsors and organizations. Um, I will be talking about Seoul, uh, the way that it had developed in a very short uh, span of time, and uh, the transition from the early developmental models um, that, that made Seoul what it is. And so I, I um, set the um, title as Between Plan and Project, uh, but this is from the point primarily of, the, of governance. Uh, but since our, I think, section is titled Planning Fundamentals, I would just say that, that planning is a culture. And as a culture, it is created through history. It changes even as uh, we speak at this very moment. And so, uh, Seoul, uh, Korea is, is, is a society that, that is very uh, used to a planning culture. Uh, and and uh, that we need to understand the very complex historical and cultural conditions in which um, uh, the way that planning and, and governance intervenes. And so we have a, a map of Seoul. The yellow line indicates the uh, administrative boundaries. About 10 million uh, people reside within the boundaries. Uh, the larger metropolitan area is about 25 million. So roughly half of the population of South Korea resides in the Seoul metropolitan government, uh, uh, in the Seoul metropolitan area. Um, Planning uh, was, uh, for a long time, uh, part of the culture because uh, Seoul, when it was first established in 1394 as the capital of the Joseon dynasty, was, planned, was a planned city. It was based on Confucian ritual principles and on principles of geomancy. And so it was a beautifully um, uh, organized city, uh, it is uh, the, the seat of governments. It was a political uh, city uh, planned to govern the, the, um, the dynasty. And so you have wonderful, beautiful palatial complexes. But within this uh, confusion system, uh, the primary system of governance was a bureaucracy. And uh, it was based on, on uh, confusion meritocracy. And so uh, for taking the long historical view, uh, the system of, of working through documents, through writing, through administrative systems uh, has been with us for, for centuries. Um, this, this culture, you could say, was transformed into a rather authoritarian um, uh, culture during the, the Japanese colonial period uh, that extended from the uh, 1910 to 1945, but it had a, a, a bit of a wider historical period. Uh, and so it, it transformed into a rather militaristic uh, culture. And that culture extended after independence in 1945, and then it continued on to a long period of dictatorships that extended until the 1990s. So if we want to understand the uh, the, the history of Seoul in terms of, of planning and governance, you can see that, that uh, there's a great period of, of expansion in, in population. And uh, it's now, the population has now plateaued to around 10 million. And you'll see in the Urban Age um, um, uh, booklet that Seoul, as a city of, as a megalopolis that's uh, larger than 10 million, it is now a city that is in, big, in, in real crisis because the population is shrinking, uh, it's growing old, and that is part of the overall uh, uh, nature of Korea, of South Korea. Uh, but you can see that, um, particularly after 1961, when the military government uh, of Park Chung-hee uh, comes to power, that, uh, that uh, South Korea, uh, and so as a kind of, of um, machine for governance uh, for a capitalist country has a series of, of plans. So a series of five-year plans and that, that uh, national level planning extends into the city. And so uh, until 1994 when local governance is reinstated, 
uh, the mayor of Seoul is really uh, appointed by the Ministry of Internal Affairs and it is in de facto appointment by the president. And so the governance and planning of Seoul is really a kind of a, a system of national governance. And so within this bureaucratic system and culture, uh, a very rigid system of regulation is, in, is instated and you have uh, zoning plans uh, that conform. And so you have, even now, with our uh, very progressive uh, uh, mayor, we have a system of bureaucracy. Uh, but, but when you look back at, at the decades of planning, what actually drove the uh, development of Seoul was really the projects, the big projects. Um, and bureaucracies uh, really are a system of maintenance. And so they're very rigid vertical structures. But when you want to uh, implement a large plan, uh, for example, the subdivisions of large areas uh, that supported the big uh, development, really these are large-scale plan uh, projects. And when you want to implement a plan, you crisscross these bureaucratic uh, systems uh, through political will. And so uh, when you look at all these plans, they are, in fact, de facto, after the fact, uh, uh, ideas that, that uh, uh, were after the big projects. And so the subdivisions that allowed the great expansion of the city towards the south, the, the highways that were built, urban infrastructure projects, uh, and then the, the renovation into more sustainable things were all big projects that crossed the hierarchical bureaucratic system. And so now we are in a, a, a period of transition towards smaller projects, but they are still projects that are created and, and pushed through, through political will. And so we are in a, a state of transition. Globally, uh, the relation between North Korea will change the status of, of Seoul and the kind of crisis of stagnancy uh, within uh, the society may have a different kind of, of vision for the future with this opening up of the North Korean um, uh, relations. And then, uh, though the, 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 the projects have become smaller, they do work still with, within this kind of planning culture that extends to the present and the foreseeable future. Thank you. Thank you so much for a, a very clear and a very fascinating presentation and highlighting that tension where even when there is a big plan and the capacity to implement the plan, that there is this kind of pushback, micro-tension. Um, and time erodes and we, 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 we come back as we did in Paris context. 